everybody, and welcome to the Millennial Revolt, an independent political talk show that seeks to bring a different narrative than the stale one we have going on right now in the mainstream media. So today we're going to be talking about President-elect Trump and the people who he is appointing to his cabinet. Now, throughout the campaign, Donald Trump came up with a slogan called Drain the Swamp. Essentially what it meant was getting rid of all the bad apples who are in Washington, who instead of making policy to benefit the American people, they were only doing it to advance their own political careers and line their own pockets and just basically campaign and raise donations for their re-elections. Now, my hope was with this drain the swamp mentality that he was going into Washington with, that he would appoint people who are political outsiders. Now, I was under no illusion that he was going to just appoint only people who were on the outside. He needed to bring some people in who were basically on the ends in Washington so he can get things done. But what I've noticed is Donald Trump has been appointing people from Goldman Sachs. Now, Goldman Sachs has a very long history with the U.S. government. There has been many appointees from the Goldman Sachs company in the Obama administration, as well as past administrations as well. So it is very worrying because Goldman Sachs is basically the enemy to the people, if you will. They ha their dodgy business dealings were seen as some of the reasons as to why the economy damn near crashed back in um, 2008. So there's so much to discuss and let's just get right into it. Keith Munchen is a former Goldman Sachs banker and a former George Soros employee. He's a financier with deep roots on Wall Street and in Hollywood, but he has no government experience. Steve Munchen is 53 years old. He was a national finance director of President-elect Trump's campaign. He began his career on Goldman Sachs where he became partner before he branched out on his own. He created his own hedge fund. Then he moved to the West Coast and he began to finance movies like the X-Men franchise as well as Avatar. As Treasury Secretary though, he would play an important role in shaping the administration's economic policies including a package of promised tax cuts that Mr. Trump has been saying that he wants to give to the American people, increased spending on infrastructure, and change policy in terms of foreign trade. He could also lead an effort to roll back President Obama's nuclear deal with Iran and opening to Cuba by reimposing sanctions on Tehran and Havana, which I think is completely stupid if President-elect Trump would roll back President Obama's deal with Iran. We need to have better um, ties with that country. We need to stop alienating them. It would be good if we had better ties with them. And Iran at this moment is actually fighting terrorism, unlike our ally Saudi Arabia, who we learned in the WikiLeaks emails from John Podesta's emails that Saudi Arabia, along with our other ally, Qatar, is funding and providing logistical support to ISIS. So I think, if anything, President-elect Trump should do is create better ties with Iran and stop trying to alienate them and try to reimpose sanctions with them because it does no one good. It just creates a more tense atmosphere on the world stage that doesn't benefit anyone. And instead of making bombastic statements as far as Cuba is concerned, saying that if the Cuban government doesn't make the kind of concessions that President-elect Trump wants them to make, that we're going to reimpose sanctions on them. That doesn't do the Cuban people any good. That doesn't do the American people any good. You want to try to keep Cuba in the United States sphere of influence because they are literally right next to us. Now, it would be smart, and I hope President-elect Trump takes the analogy, that you draw more flies with honey than you do vinegar. When Mr. Trump won the New York Republican primary presidential primary in April, Mr. Munchen attended his victory party. The next day, he accepted Mr. Trump's invitation to become the campaign's national finance director. 
Now, Mr. Munchen told Bloomberg Businessweek in late August that nobody's going to be like, well, why did he do this if I ended up in the administration? Now, if confirmed by the Senate as Treasury Secretary, Mr. Munchen will join a list of prominent bankers who made similar moves from Wall Street to Washington, including two of his former bosses at Goldman Sachs, Henry Paulson and Robert Rubin, who were both top Goldman executives before running the Treasury Department. Mr. Munchen joined Goldman Sachs in 1985, where he worked in the fixed income department, eventually overseeing trading in mortgages, U.S. government money markets, and municipal bonds. He made partner in 1994. Mr. Munchen later became the firm's chief information officer. When Goldman Sachs converted into a publicly traded company in 1999, Mr. Munchen, like other partners, made millions of dollars. He later bought a 650,000 square foot apartment in 740 Park Avenue, a store, a storied Manhattan co-op built by Jackie Kennedy's grandfather that is known as the Billionaire's Building. In 2002, Munchen left Goldman Sachs and later was hired to run a credit fund set up by billionaire George Soros. In 2004, Steve Munchen and two former Goldman Sachs colleagues founded hedge fund Dune Capital Management LP with financial backing from George Soros. Dune soon expanded into the entertainment business, striking up a film financing deal with a unit of 21st Century Fox. Among the films Dune financed was Steven Spielberg's Avatar. So Wall Street reacted quite positively to Steve Munchen's appointment to Treasury Secretary. The KBW Bank's index was up as much as 2% to its highest intraday since May of 2008, and Goldman Sachs was up as much as 3.5% to its highest since December of 2007. Meanwhile, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have slammed Donald Trump on what they call his hypocrisy in electing Steve Munchen as Treasury Secretary. Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren said that during the campaign, Donald Trump told the American people that he was going to change Washington by taking on Wall Street. They said in a rare joint statement, Donald Trump's choice of Treasury Secretary Steve Munchen is just another Wall Street insider. This is not the type of change that Donald Trump promised to bring to Washington. This is hypocrisy at its worst. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren also said, after his bank, meaning Steve Munchen's bank since he worked at Goldman Sachs, pocketed billions in taxpayer dollars from the bailout, Munchen moved on to make a fortune running another bank that aggressively foreclosed on family steel reeling from the financial crisis. Warren has also said in a previous statement criticizing Munchen, calling him the Forrest Gump of the financial crisis. They also said, this pick makes clear that Donald Trump wants to cater to the same Wall Street executives that have hurt working families time and time again. And it brings me back to my point, if you are trying to drain the swamp as you say, why would you bring in a person who people look at as a representation of crony capitalism? From Goldman Sachs. Now it just seems very odd to me. It, ju- it just the perception of it is not good as well. And President-elect Trump isn't the only person who has done this. President Obama has brought people from Goldman Sachs into his administration as well. And President George Bush has also brought people from Goldman Sachs into his administration as as well. So Goldman Sachs and the U.S. government have a very long history of bringing people from that particular firm into the government. A critic of Goldman Sachs, Christopher Whalen, the managing director of the Institutional Risk Analytics, which rates banks and provides customer analytics, has said that Goldman Sachs is a political organization masquerading as an investment bank, and they're sitting at the table with the top people in government. He called Goldman Sachs the most political firm on Wall Street. Examples include former Goldman executive Henry Paulson, who led the Treasury Department when the bailout was first formulated 
um, in September of 2008 and who appointed the former Goldman Vice President Neil Kashiri to oversee the massive $700 billion TARP fund. There was also the Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner who installed a circle of former Goldman bankers to help him navigate the country through the financial crisis. Goldman Sachs contributed $980,945 to President Barack Obama's presidential campaign more than any other company. And Goldman Sachs has had more than 30 ex-government officials working as registered lobbyists or staff in the government. Both admirers and detractors assert that Goldman's influence has only grown and that it has not always served the best interests of the government. People at Goldman are now at a much higher, much more visible level in government, says former Goldman Vice President Lisa J. Elchin, who wrote Goldman Sachs, The Culture of Success. Elchin thinks the bigger issue beyond Goldman is the influence of Wall Street in the corridors of power. They are all from the same world. Whether it's Morgan Stanley or Goldman filling the Treasury or the Fed with people with very similar views. Elchin says that the financial agencies used to be staffed by people from industry and academics along with bankers, given the widening gap between the salaries of, main, of Wall Street and Main Street in recent decades. The concentration of bankers at federal agencies mean they may be a little out of touch with the concerns of the working people in business. There's a bit of a love affair with Wall Street, says Elchin, explaining that much of that is due to the complexity of the financial instruments from credit default swaps to derivatives now prevalent in the financial industry. It's gotten so complete that we seem to only trust those who have worked in that world. Whalen says that the firm has been adept at using their influence in Washington, D.C. to serve their own interests, getting the info before anyone else does and acting on it, he says, claiming the legendary Goldman Sachs chairman, Sidney Weinberg, used to sit in the office of the Time magazine editor, Henry Lucci, to soak up the latest tidbits of information. Whalen claims that the firm was suffering in November of 2008 and December until they started ebbing themselves into the administration of President Barack Obama. When you saw the stop turned, it showed that they had established themselves sufficiently. Their political stars were in alignment. President-elect Trump has also confirmed that he offered the job of heading the Department of Commerce to 78-year-old billionaire Wilbur Ross. The chairman of W.L. Ross & Co. is known for his investment in distressed industries. Ross advised the president-elect on economic policy during the campaign. The billionaire investor has repeatedly criticized the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement as well as the North American Free Trade Agreement with Canada and Mexico. Ross blamed NAFTA along with the entry of China into the World Trade Organization for causing massive U.S. factory job losses. He said, I think there's a big difference between the impact of trade agreements and corporate America and the impact of Mr. and Mrs. America. Corporate America has adjusted to them by inv investing lots of capital offshore. He said in an interview earlier with CNBC this year. In recent years, Goldman Sachs has led Wall Street's campaign to dominate political donations in an effort critics refer to as trying to create the best government money can buy. Since reporting records became available in 2002, Goldman Sachs and, in, and its employees have made $51.6 million in political contributions. The majority of funds have gone to Democrats, but they have also been known to donate to Republicans as well. Goldman Sachs Inc. was the top corporate donor for President Obama in 2008 and the second largest donor to the Hillary Clinton campaign in the same cycle. But Goldman Sachs was also the top contributor to the 2012 campaign of Republican presidential nominee Mitt Romney. For the 2016 election reporting cycle, as of September 30th, the Goldman Sachs Group Inc. Political Action Committee has raised $811,453 and spent $694,150. At the current pace of fundraising, Goldman Sachs will exceed the $1.6 it raised and spent in the 2012 presidential cycle.
So as of right now, this is an extremely bad pick that Donald Trump has made, in my opinion. Maybe he was the right person for the, do the job as far as president-elect Trump is concerned. I will try to hold my reservations and see what he does, but I will watch this man very closely because I personally do not think it's a good idea to have investment bankers or people with ties to Wall Street in are admin in the administration of the president or in the treasury department because as we have seen from past administrations they just waste the money that they are given and it doesn't help the american people and it doesn't benefit us so i'm the millennial revolt thank you guys so much for watching and you have a wonderful day bye